Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with a brand new series. And this one is going to feature some of the fails in One Hive Genesis. Uh, this is a series that people have asked to see in the past. So I thought, as the final 10,000 subscriber celebration video, or at least the thing I'm doing for 10,000 subscribers, maybe not technically a celebration video, but basically this is kicking off uh, the 10,000 or finishing the 10,000 uh, celebration. And I'm going to be showing some of the fails because you can learn a lot from them, to be honest. And I think they provide some more insight rather than just the three stars that you see so much. So I do have the base destruction series, which does feature a few fails. But besides that, and besides some of the live attacks you guys see, uh, it's pretty much all three stars. So we're going to take a look at some fails, Town Hall 11, 10, and 9. I wanted to include a little bit of each in this video. And, you know, you might not see the, the, the strategy you're looking for, but tell me what you think of this series as a whole and if you guys want me to continue doing it. So be sure to let me know. But anyway, we're taking a look at a Town Hall 11 attack first. And this one uses Valks. So uh, Pendragon starting off here with the Golem. Uh, had a few Baby Dragons. I'm not sure what they were for and sometimes it's just me i don't know the plan maybe it, the plan went differently than they had than pendragon had expected um but sometimes i think people do uh use baby dragons more than they should uh that being said i don't think this is what made or broke the attack because he comes in here and honestly you cannot expect to direct valks uh, to that jump spell, which is off to the right here, with any level of confidence, when there's so when there's such a big uh, long compartment, because all his Valks go off to the left. I think he tried to use a few boulders to funnel it, but on a base like this, this is not a good base for Valks, at least from that entry point, because there's so many different possibilities and different directions they could go. Plus, the CC troops are so deep in the base that the Valks are sure to get out ahead of the Golem or anything else they could tank. So the Valks are going to be the first thing you get hit by those CC troops, which also didn't help. But that was kind of water under the bridge uh, because the Valks went off to the side so much and they went down pretty quickly. Fast forward to the end here. Um, we'll move on to a Town Hall 10 attack and then some Town Hall 9s. But nice try to Pendragon. Uh, next one, just bear with me as I go through here. It's so much easier not to have to edit this out. So I'm just going to have to take a few seconds between attacks to find them. But it shouldn't be too big of a deal. This one is by Chaos, and you can see he's doing the minor bowler attack, but uh, one thing to notice is uh, the way he uses the bowlers, and that's 9 bowlers, which is times 6, uh, 54 troop space, so that's a lot of, of troops to invest. Plus, he's using two baby dragons for funneling. He has a third one for I don't know what. Um, but really, guys, look, if you can use wizards or minions, there's so much less troop space they take up. Look to do that on your funneling. Um, baby dragons are great, but not for every situation. So here comes the kill squad. I think, honestly, especially without the king, the bowlers are getting little to no extra value. Really, the queen and the golem could have gotten most of what he gets. Now, I think the bowlers do allow him to get that Inferno Tower taken out, but it's just not an efficient use, and because of that, he has less miners, um, and there's still a huge uh, portion of the base left up, so this would truly need to be a mass miner attack. It would need, you know, I don't know, 40 miners. I'm not sure how many it had. I missed I missed the number at the beginning, but there's, there's not enough when I watched this the first time. And the king, people have been using the king to kind of run around the outside and keep the miners inside the base, I'm not sure how I feel about this quite yet, because the king is pretty valuable entering the base, especially if he's tanking for bowlers, because when you pop his ability, um, those barbarians soak up the Inferno Tower streams, they do quite a bit for you, um, so I'm not, I'm not sure if it's worth it yet to use the king in that situation. Uh, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, but either way, I think the bowlers in that initial kill squad just didn't get enough value, and that's evident by the fact they really only got uh, that top compartment. The queen did go on to take out a few more buildings, but she goes down eventually, at which point it's all up to the miners. He does have, you know, quite a few spells to use on them. Here's two more heals, but just not enough miners. Uh, we'll go ahead and go times two as things start to wrap up, because the miners come into the base, but there's a ton of HP and uh, they'll start to go down pretty quickly, especially with the Tesla popping and uh, the, the pretty high level point defense in that area. So yeah, the miners go down right here, just not enough juice, the skellies pop, which are never, never a good thing for your miners, and uh, nice try to chaos. But I think 
a, a small adjustment to get more value for the troop space that was taken up by the bowlers and possibly the baby the baby dragons. Uh, a, a better investment of that troop space might have gotten the three star. Moving on, we have um, let's see, twelve thirty three. Um, here we go. The arrow attacking uh, Mecco, I think this is, and he's using a, a mass bowler, but similar to who was it? Pendragon, I think, with the Valks. Similar to Pendragon, you can't expect your bowlers to go into the center of the base, even if you kind of start off with the funneling, because there's. There's so much that can draw them. Even these buildings, which I think I can tap on. The mortar, the uh, storage, that building, that building, even that building. Those are all going to draw your miners to the side. And if you want them to go into the core where he drops that jump, it's going to be really difficult. The funneling is so hard to do when you have a wide compartment. Really the only thing that can stop bowlers from going to the left or the right is walls. And when there's one long skinny compartment, you can expect them to go either direction. So the king and some bowlers go off to the right. I will say actually quite a few miners did go to the core uh, compared to what I would have expected, but still it's not nearly enough to take out the core. The second inferno tower is still up and protected. Still has some of those core testas and expos. So really things spread out on him pretty quickly. And that's never effective for a mass bowler attack when things get too spread out. So the queen will go down in just a moment along with the king. And that will wrap this thing up. Nice try. Um, but I don't know, maybe use miners. Especially on these bases that have low level infernos. Look to use miners um, because they don't take quite as much. It's harder for something to go wrong when you use miners. They're more reliable, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, for bases that have level 1 infernos and stuff like that. But it depends on your attacking power, obviously. Okay, uh, two Town Hall 9 attacks. We have... Um, let me go down to when this happened. Um, yes, this one. Uh, Fahim. And we'll go ahead and fast forward to the start, just for sake of time. Don't want this to take too long. Um, just drop down some minions, some archers. This guy had a bunch of corner stuff. Weird place to put your storages, but, you know... Probably could have dropped a goblin even, but archers are fine too. Okay, so Fahim comes in here and he's planning to do a Valk attack. And I think each attack, if nothing else, teaches you a lesson. We've seen funneling for bowlers, for Valks. We've seen um, at Town Hall 10, the, the hybrid attack with the bowlers sometimes isn't the best, especially going directly at the Inferno Tower. But I think the lesson this one teaches is that if you have a great queen walk like this, that's awesome, but that can ruin your attack if you like let it if you let it last too long, because you only have three minutes, and you can see things have already taken quite a while, especially because he dropped some stuff at the beginning, which ate up about ten seconds before his queen was even placed on the map. So right here, he should be deploying all his stuff, but he doesn't. Uh, you can see just waiting, the Valks, the King, the Bowlers, all that stuff, just waiting. I guess the King went down right there, but he needed some way to make this go quicker because right now the King and the Valks are just kind of taking out these trash buildings. And really, you know, he should have invested some funneling troops. I see he's trying to kind of do the funneling with the Valks and stuff themselves, but it doesn't work out here. Maybe I missed something. Maybe he dropped something that didn't get the job done. But either way, the funneling was kind of cheap almost like he was trying to to get away with doing uh, not as much funneling it was needed but the point is the troops aren't going inside the base in the same position and they're going in way later than they should he's already down to a minute 12 seconds really at this point um like i said as soon as the queen had d dealt with the cc troops uh his valks should have been inside the base because when you think about it there's times when you need to pay attention to your queen, when you're going to drop a rage on her, when you're going to use her ability, when you're going to poison something coming from the CC or a defensive hero. And sometimes, um, if it's appropriate, you can wait and watch that before you deploy your troops if you have the time. But even if that's happening, uh, you can still start doing other stuff. You can still multitask as long as you have it planned out and you know roughly when you're going to need to pay attention to your queen again. So I think he could have... Uh, manage both these parts of the attack a little better um, it wasn't the cleanest entry but he does have the firepower as we fast forward here to get through the rest of the base he just doesn't have the time so i think that uh 
had he sent that stuff in, you know, up to 30 seconds earlier, to be honest, as soon as those CC troops were down, um, he might have had a good shot at the three star, but doesn't have enough juice. And I guess sending his stuff in also would have helped the queen stay up longer because it would have protected her flanks. So nice try to Fahim. Um, I think we have one more for you guys. 18-7. Uh, where is it? As I go through here, a lot of attacks. Okay, this one. Uh, Rigo, and if I can remember this correctly. Okay, yeah, this was the air attack, and I think this one, it's, the plan is really good in theory. I mean, look at those three air defenses. How can you not, how can you not want to, uh, to, to take that out and use air, a La Luna on the rest of the base, especially with the queen right there? I mean, everything is over in this area of the base. Um, it's really tempting, and Rigo is going to take advantage of that, but the main issue is all those wizard towers, and you cannot trust wall breakers. I know he drops down a giant, but the giant does not do anything. The wall breakers still get killed, and literally just that wall breaker fail will ruin his entire attack, because now the queen, I don't think she can reach any of those air defenses, plus the healers will go down. Everything's going to go wrong here, so it's just kind of sad because the plan was so good, but I think, especially when you're working with a compartment that's so tight, just this um, little two-building compartment that's kind of a sliver in between two bigger compartments, I don't know, maybe use a jump, maybe don't queen walk it, just bring a, a kill squad with some bowlers and like some giants, bring like an HGHB type kill squad, and then use the La Luna on the rest of the base, and maybe even get that fourth air defense as a result. But the queen walk is so difficult because... She's not going to beat through the wall 99% of the time, so just keep walking like she did here. So really, you're dependent on those wall breakers, and when you have a wall breaker fail, it can just destroy the entire attack. Plus, we'll go ahead and fast forward because those three air defenses still up. This thing's pretty much over. But plus, um, like I kind of lost my train of thought, but I think what I was saying is the queen... Um, there's no chance of her really shooting through the wall most of the time. She'll just keep walking if the wall breakers fail. And it, it's it's a very delicate thing to wall breaker your queen into the base. Maybe he could have used a jump spell and just funneled her in a little better. That might have been an option. Just invest that spell because it's so difficult to wall breaker in there. But I think that's one thing people kind of overlook is they figure, okay, I can wall break her in right here. But sometimes in attacks, there's certain things that are that are going to be difficult to do. And they seem like simple things, but if you overlook them, they can ruin your entire attack. And it doesn't matter how well planned out everything else is. If your wall breakers don't enter the base, for, uh, they don't open up the wall for the queen walk, you could be screwed. So, yeah, I hope that point kind of made sense for you guys. But anyway, let me know what you think of this series. Just kind of an experimental uh, mode right now. So I, I want to know what you guys think about it and if this is something you guys want to see continue because I think it's a nice uh, insightful series that can add some, some more information that you don't get from the other series. But I don't know. Let me know. I'll see what you guys have to say. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, Sectatron out.